On today's episode, it's another Nick Collection 5 filter. Today, it's the Vignette Blur filter. We're going to dive into this filter. I'm going to show you some nice tips and tricks to get great results when using this filter. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, it's the Nick Collection. I'm working with one of my very favorite filters inside of the Nick Collection, and that is the Vignette Blur Filter. Sounds like a simple, easy filter to use, but there's a few tips or tricks I can show you to help make it work even better. If you've never used this filter before, I think after watching this video and seeing what you can do with it, I believe you will start using it. Also, let me know in the comments section below if this is a filter that you use and enjoy, or if you haven't used it yet, let me know that too. I'd really like your feedback. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button and also click that bell notification icon, and that way you'll be notified every time I put out a new tutorial. And when you do that, you help support The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly because you know it's all about that algorithm thing. And don't forget to like and share as well. I really appreciate that. It really helps me out. If you don't yet own the Nick Collection 5, you can click on my affiliate link in the description below. You can even get a free trial and try it out for yourself. When you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission and this helps to support the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Okay, then let's dive right into this. This is the Vignette Blur Filter. Now, I love this filter. If you like lens baby type images, you can get those lens baby type effects you know, you get uh, a nice little uh, area that's in focus and then you could blur out the rest of the image or you could just blur out the borders. I don't really use it that way. I like to use it for creative purposes. All right, so what's it do? It attenuates the details around the center of the image, allowing the eye to be drawn into the image. This filter has two drop down menus, one for shape and one for type. I'll show you how that all works. Then you have a transition control like you normally have in any type of a vignetting tool. You can adjust the size of your vignette and you can adjust the opacity. And we're also able to place the center of the vignette wherever we want it to go. And for me, this filter gives you some very beautiful, creative blurring effects. Like as you can see in the sample image from the Nick manual here, the image on the right with the blur looks a lot more interesting than the image on the left. So let's go ahead and jump into it and I'll show you some really cool tips and tricks and also some creative techniques. I know you're probably thinking who needs another vignette filter, but this is a cool one because you can really blur out areas of the image. And I'm a flower photographer and I love to do images of flowers and I like to shoot with a really shallow depth of field so I get some nice bokeh. But sometimes I wish I had some more bokeh. And so I'm, my first example is on a flower image and let me show you what I can do with this. If you're new to the Nick Collection, I'm working out of Photoshop. I always use it as a Photoshop plugin. You can either come up here to File, come down to Automate, and grab the Nick Selective tool if you don't have it. Or if you have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, there's a new My Actions panel. You can make yourself an action to launch it. It's a little bit quicker. And I have an action right here in the My Actions panel. I just click this and it launches it immediately. Now, I want to show you something. If you come down here, see with this little gear icon, click this. I don't like to have my Nick Selective tool open up automatically each time I use Photoshop because I don't use the Nick Collection on every image. Of most images I do, but sometimes I don't use it, so I don't want the Selective tool coming up. And see this little checkbox right here? If you uncheck this, Nick will not automatically launch for you. And that's why I made this action, so I could just open it up real quick. So once I close it and I decide, hey, I need it, I'll just click Nick Select the Tool and up it comes. Now you can take this and move it anywhere you want. I'm just going to pop it over here just to get it out of the way of the image. Inside the Nick Selective Tool, you're going to find all these different options for you. Now Color Effects Pro 5 is where the Vignette Blur Filter is found. And we can just click right here and launch Color Effects Pro 5. Or you see this little drop down arrow, click this, and inside of here, you're gonna find all your different favorited filters. Anytime you favorite a filter, it'll show up in a list here. And you can also do presets as well. 
but I have the vignette blur filter right here so I can click this and it'll launch Color Effects Pro 5 and go right to the vignette blur, which is really quick and helps speed up a workflow. I'm gonna go ahead and click on vignette blur and we'll launch Color Effects Pro 5. By the way, at the time of this video airing, uh, there is a new update for the Nick Collection 5. There were some bugs in the last update, and this new update has taken care of a lot of the bugs, and it's working better with Mac M1 computers as well. Already we see some blurring on my image. Here is the before. Here's a compare button. Here's the before. I'm just left clicking with my mouse and holding this down. Here's the before and here's the after. And already that looks really nice. But let me show you some tips and tricks here. Now remember, we can adjust the shape of the vignette and the type. And now for my first tip, we need to pick a shape and we need to pick a type. Now, if we come over here to shape and if we click this drop down, you'll notice we have three shapes in here. And it's kind of hard to tell what these shapes look like. Well, we know this is an oval, but what is this shape? I'm not sure. And this shape here, I'll show you how we can find out what those shapes are so we can pick the right one. And to do that, I want you to come to type and click this drop down. And here you're going to see four different types. Now, when you hover over these, you'll see them change. You can see that adds like a kind of like a light foggy look, which is really beautiful for flower photography. And then number one is just a, a natural type blurring effect and then three is another it's more of a diffuse blurring effect and then the fourth one is a really whitish like blurring effect which is cool as well for certain types of images but i want you to use type four to figure out what this is going to look like and the reason this is so helpful because we have this white blurring effect it's really easy to pick up what the shape will actually look like and to really hone in on it even further come to transition next and take transition the whole way to the left and right now i'm on shape two and you can see that's an oval shape and you can see the size as well i can adjust the size of the shape okay now we can also place the center now, for instance, if I want this to be centered on my flower, if I decided I want this oval shape, I can click place center and then click maybe right here and we can move it over the flower. See how easy that is to find the sweet spot where you want to keep that area in focus. But check this out. You can also see what your other shapes are like now. So let's click this shape drop down. Let's go to one. I'm hovering over one. You can see that's a circle. And shape number two is an oval. And shape number three, which is what I thought was an oval, which isn't. It's more of a square framing type shape. But you see how this white foggy background is going to really let you see the shape type. So for this image, I can go through the different shapes. So I don't want shape three, but I think I definitely want shape two because shape one's more of a circle. And this flower is more wider. So I want to go with this oval shape. So now I've got my shape. So I'm going to click on two. But I'm not quite done. What I need to do now is figure out the transition. Right now I'm at zero. So there's really no transition. There is a slight transition there. But let's start to drag this to the right. And see how we want it to transition into the image. And maybe something like that. Now we can adjust the size. And again, having this white foggy background helps us to do that. So let's adjust the size. And I'm thinking something like that. Now there is an opacity here as well that we can pull back. I'm not going to use this white shape. We'll sh I'll show you that in a sec second here. I've already got the center right. So I think I'm good there. So now let's find the right blur type. Right now it's on four. So if we click the drop down, let's hover over one. That gives us that nice blurry background. Now number two is a nice soft muted foggy look, which I think I'm going to use on this image. And number three is more of a just a diffuse type blur. And again, number four was white. So I think I'm going to go with two. And now we can study the image and I like the way it's looking. I like the way everything is blending here. Let me play with the transition here a little bit more. And I think I'm going to drag it into the left here because I want this to be nice and light and not look like it has a vignette on it, so to speak. I know it's a vignette filter, but I'm going for a creative effect here. 
Now, it's a little bit over this part of the flower, which I'd like to not have it as much, but I'm going to take care of that in Photoshop, and I'll show you that in a minute. I think the effect is too strong, so we have opacity. Now, I'm going to take the opacity and start to drag it to the left and just ease back on that a little bit. And I think right there. Now, let's take a look. I'm going to left-click this compare and hold it down. Here's the before. And here's the after, but look at that nice dreamy look. But remember, I'm going to take care of the center portion here in a minute. But the key takeaway here and my tip is to start out with that number four. Okay, so you can really get your shape honed in and the transition the way it should look. And I almost forgot to mention the size. It helps you get that too. Okay, so at this point, I think I'm good to go. It's a pretty easy filter to use, but I think the hardest part about this filter is finding the right shape, size, transition, and placement. Because if you don't get those right, you will not be happy with your final results. And then once you get the right shape, size, and transition, then you can go and pick the right type, you know, and just hover through the different types and find the right type and then do a little fine tuning with opacity and you're good to go. And then once you get back to Photoshop or whatever your hosting program is, you can do some final touch-ups and make it just perfect. So let me go ahead and click apply and we'll send this back to Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean. Now that we're back in Photoshop, to do some touch-up on this, I need to add a layer mask to this layer. So you can come right down here in Photoshop and click on this icon. That puts a white layer mask in there. Get yourself a black brush. Right now we're on black. If you're not on black, you can type your X key and flip this around. Whenever you add a mask, you get the default black and white swatches here. And so I'm with my brush, what I'm going to do is get a nice 0% hardness brush, something like this. And I believe at 100% opacity, I'll try that first, and just kind of paint right in this area here, just like so. I like how it's washing out over here. Now I can drop my opacity to say like 20%, type the X key to get a white brush, and I'm just gonna kind of blend this edge in here to make sure everything is just blending and transitioning nicely and something like that. Let's disable the layer mask. Right now we can see the layer mask. If you hold your shift key down and click on the layer mask, you see the X, but now you can see before the layer mask. Now if I shift click again, Here's after the layer mask. So again, before and here's after. Now, if you have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, click this X right here. There's the before and there's the after. So just a little bit more color in there. I think that looks good. Now, if you wanted some further adjustment here, you can double click this and get the property panel and then take the density and drag this to the left and just add a little bit of that in there this black turns to more of a, a darker gray color. So I'm just letting a little bit of that in there. So if it was too strong, check it out. Here's density at 100%. So if you feel that effects too strong and too bold sticking out at you, you can ease it off by taking this density back a little bit. And I think I like that. Now here's my overall before. Let me know what you think in the comment section below if you like this effect. Here's the before, kind of like yeah, I don't like it so much, but now here's the after. And now I think it looks really good. Now, if the effect is overall too strong, just take the layer opacity and drag it back a little bit and you could ease that off a little bit. And I might do that back to about 77%. Here is the before and here's the after. But did you think the vignette blur filter could be so wonderful to use? And it gives you really fantastic results if it's used properly. If you get an image where you feel a little bit of a blur can really help it out, use the vignette blur filter. Give it a shot and I think you'll like it. Here's two examples that I want to show you. The first image was my own image. These are two stock images. I just want to show you before and after after using the vignette blur filter. So here's the before and here is the after. But see how I was able to get that nice extra softness in this image. Again, here's the before and here is the after. I think it really helped this one out. Now I have one final image to show you and that's this one right here. Another stock image. This is a really cool image. I like the really up close portrait look. Here's the before. 
This is a little more subtle, and here is the after. See the little bit of blur around the edges here? But again, here is the before, and here is the after. I didn't need to use a mask on this one. But that's the Vignette Blur Filter. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give this Vignette Blur Filter a try. And let me know in the comments section below your thoughts about this filter. If you use it, do you like it? If you don't use it, are you going to start using it in the future? I'd really like to know. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.